guys, um, it's Ian from SS Cars and I'm sitting in my new Speciale. My goodness me, it is a very driver focused environment. I drove the car probably a month ago now and I thought it was just tremendously exciting car to drive, so totally focused and driver centric. But today we're, um, we're actually we've taken delivery of the car. I think I mentioned earlier to you that actually the car's going to be delivered to my house in Weybridge. But um, right now, Chris and I thought, well, probably nothing more exciting than taking the car out for a drive. So I've got the, um, the iconic Ferrari keyring. Really, really nice just with the the, the, the bonnet open because obviously this is a mid-engine car so the, 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 the boot effectively is under the bonnet and then your open door and closed door buttons. So if we pop this into the ignition, as you would in a normal car, and then push the button to the left on the steering wheel, and she's, she starts. Sounds nice. I don't know whether you can hear that, but the, but the, 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 the backing on the exhaust is just incredible. Okay, right, so to, to go, we pull the paddle on the right hand side and that shifts it into first. If we wanted to go in reverse, that, those controls are down here, but we're all ready to go. So I've got the, uh, the Manitino, which I, I did cover in a couple of weeks ago when we came down to see the car after Topaz had done the film protection. I've got it in sport, but you have wet, which puts it in bumpy, bumpy road mode, which I shall do now as well. Just activate bumpy road mode. Um, you have race, and then traction control off, and all systems off. Traction control off is an interesting one because actually it still allows the slide, the side slip control, to control um, how much slide it gives you when you're you're really coming out of corners fast. Okay, so we're all, I think we're all ready to go. It's taking me a second to get used to. I'm hoping that the miles per hour, yeah, the miles per hour is, is showing in the, the right hand screen here. Quite hard, a suspension, but not too hard. window up so you don't get deafened by the noise. There we go. I need to warm her up a little before we um, before we can actually use any of the performance. Unlike my FF, it seems that she is set in manual gear change mode rather than an automatic so that takes a little getting used to so presumably I have to hit the auto button on the center console if I want to use the the automatic mode quite a lot of road noise coming up but then the car has the Mitchell and Cup 2 tires and therefore it, it really is a race, a race prep car really. I think the option on it is to go for the P Pirelli P0s if you want to have normal tyres and you're using it on sort of mixed weather condition type environments. So we flick down through the gears by using the paddle on the, on the left and as you probably know the indicators are actually on the steering wheel as well here and here. a nice noise. Very, very, very focused. Makes you feel like a racing driver, which you've got to be careful of in a car like this, simply because uh, you don't, you've got to watch your speed in it, because it accumulates speed so quickly 
as I said it's got 605 horsepower and 400 pounds of of torque and the torque's available almost all the way through the rev range peaking at 6,000 revs the engine will rev to over 9,000 revs so very high rev limit and although I haven't done this yet apparently at the top end it sounds completely manic again to make sure I tell everybody where I'm going I've always found um, that the indicator controls on this car were fairly intuitive until you have the steering wheel upside down and at that point in time you really do have to think about what you're doing I think we merge into the traffic here so since I can't see very much I'm just going to put my foot down so you get a little bit of slippage um, it allows a little bit of slippage in fourth before the, the traction control cuts in so you just need to be aware of that I came off the power very slightly um, of course with 600 brake horsepower in a car that weighs 1395 kilograms you have to be aware of putting all that power down through the uh, the rear tires I think we might go on the motor. Should we go on the motorway for a second, Chris? Yeah, think? let's yeah. do that. Since it allows me to concentrate a little bit more on the car itself. So feed the power in. That's us doing 70s. So there is a fair amount of road noise. Can you move that down? I can see the yeah, Fantastic, thank you. I just couldn't see the mirror. from an emissions viewpoint which is a good thing you know it's much much nicer to the environment better fuel consumption and ultimately you can get more power but the problem is I've never driven a turbo until very recently that didn't actually have some turbo lag and I have to say that the 488 is absolutely fantastic I mean there's very little turbo lag but it doesn't rev to 9250 reps like this one does 73 you can hear the engines just holding back if I drop it down to 60 it's say breaking any a speed limits but if I drop it down to 60 which I'm doing now and then drop it down a couple of gears once I've got this car out of the way you can hear the the noise and that's at 4,000 reps so what this thing what type of noise this thing would make at 9,000 revs I, I can only imagine I mean it must be fearsome and I had a bit of, of wheel slippage on the way onto the motorway and I was at 4,000 revs and um, I have to 
to say, my goodness me, um, what it would be like at, at 9,000, you know, you, you have to be very careful with the, the power that this car has. That's, even in seventh, it's just completely awesome in terms of the, the power available. Of course, it's a very light car. I think despite the fact that the FF had 650 brake, of course, it's almost a two-ton machine. I think it's 18, 90 kilograms. Whereas you shaved 500 off for this, so that's, a, that's half a ton lighter. And it just feels unbelievably responsive. No kicking back from the steering, but it's very, very direct, so you really don't need to do much to feel the car twitch, which is what you want in a, in a race car. I absolutely can't wait until I have this car on the track. I mean, it's going to be phenomenal. So we changed that, a couple of gears. That's enough, actually. Go from 65 to 75 so quickly. You'll lose your license in a nanosecond. And of course, we do promote keeping to all the speed limits. So I think, you know, when we max this, it'll either have to be on a track or, or in Germany. So that's maybe a possibility, Chris, for a trip. Right. I think I mean, it'd be quite interesting to see how it does perform. Of course, the top speed on this is 205. I think it's probably plenty fast enough. Apparently the Pirelli P0s are much quieter on the road than the Michelin Cups, but on the other hand, I think you have to look at what you're going to use the car for. I mean, I'm quite likely to use this car, I would say, for um, having a bit of fun on a, a Sunday morning, um, or any time on a Sunday, and uh, also in, in terms of, uh, you know, summer trips. So. You know, we intend to we intend to use this to to go into France on holiday, and uh, we'll do some some articles in the hotels that we stay in, and other cars that we come across on on the way. But it's um, not really going to be used in the ice, and uh, and very rarely in the wet. that come up on the on the um, top of the steering wheel is quite important because the car accelerates so quickly that you don't really have time to take your eyes off the road so having just an indicator to let you know that it's time to change gear I think is a good thing I'm sort of getting the hang of it now starting to maybe be able to drive it a bit quicker Again, being conscious of keeping it within the speed limits. What a machine. It's so different to the FF, it's almost impossible to explain how different. But you know, with the bumpy road setting in, in place, it you know it, it's really very usable great fun to drive. I can't imagine this this one is set up with both nav and stereo. I just can't imagine you ever using the stereo. I mean you're so focused on your driving. Maybe if I'm driving it into London I tend to use it as a uh, I go up to London maybe two three times a week I intend to use it as my commute for London. Uh, London's only sort of the round trip into London and back's 40 miles so I don't feel that I'm putting excessive mileage on it. I'm going to try and keep the mileage sensible here because quite clearly, um, you know, this car is is an appreciating asset. So whether it appreciates or not really is largely irrelevant, but it would be nice if it didn't lose loads of money. Okay. See the red lights coming up? Quite a 
violent gear change. The the gear change um, speeds on this are actually 20, 25% faster on the upshift and, f and un incredibly, incredibly 44% faster on the downshift than the standard 458 and having driven the, four, the 458 on numerous occasions it feels faster it's just straight into the next gear don't know the speed limit's 50 <laughs> have to be a bit careful of that This also has all the lap time information, so if you're actually on a uh, circuit, it'll keep all the information based upon each lap that you take and, and give you an analysis of where you're gaining time and where you're losing time compared to the, the last lap. Obviously, we're not on a lap, but I have the, inf the, the sort of the basic info. Oh, cool. That's just what I wanted. We'll go this way. Sounds like a good idea. little bit confused as to where I am, which, <laughs> not knowing the Swindon area particularly well. Hopefully we'll be able to make our way back to the, uh, the garage. You could always use the sat-nav. I could if I knew how to put it on, Chris. I'd have to, I'd have to um, fiddle with some of the controls, which I'd rather do when the car's stationary than actually when I'm actually driving in it. But my, my gut tells me this has got to take us back in the general direction. But I'd like to be absolutely 100% positive about that. controls now on the right hand side so I've got my temperature gauge, um, oil, oil temperature gauge and oil, sorry, engine temperature and oil pressure gauges. Also I've got my, my speedometer digital readout. You can pull up onto the right hand screen the, um, the speedometer in an analog format but again I don't want to do that whilst I'm moving so it probably have to wait. Now the car, even in manual mode, will change down gears for you. So if I'm coming into a roundabout and I forget, like I almost did there, it will, it'll go, come back down through the gear so you don't end up trying to pull away in fifth. But if you want to change upper gear, so from fourth to fifth like I did then, you have to use the paddles unless you're in auto. Alright Christopher, what's your gut feel here? <laughs> <laughs> Rawton. Rawton, you reckon Rawton? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I remember where my indicators are and I don't hit anything. Okay, that's good, Chris. Well done. So it's just a name you recognised. Well, it's, it's um, I think this will get better as you use it, but again, you're so focused on the driving, you don't really get time to look around and enjoy what... One of the things that Ferrari are absolutely wonderful about is interior. The interior of this car is just phenomenal. I mean, I love the carbon fibre. So obviously it's the lightest material available, so that's why they use it. But it also lends such an event to driving this car. I mean, it's just fantastic. And again, with the rest of the trim, the rest of the trim that's not Alcantara, is pretty, sorry, it's not carbon fibre, is pretty much Alcantara. Okay guys, well look, I'm going to sign off now. We're, we're not